Hi, good people. It's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent. I hope this finds you doing really well. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, this mostly focuses on all things perfume and fragrance related with an occasional other artistic or DIY project. For those of you returning, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't yet, if you enjoy this content, I hope you'll consider clicking the red subscribe button to help my channel grow and so that we can stay in touch and I can get to know you better. Um, today I am sitting in a, an alternate <laughs> location from where I usually film in a little study in my, um, house, in my very old house that is full of kind of Cleveland, uh, memorabilia and or Pulp Fiction and it's my record room. I'm playing what I find to be a really cool experimental record, one of my favorites, which is, uh, by Alice Coltrane. And I thought I would talk with you today about, um, what I am learning to be a really interesting experimental perfume house or line, Imaginary Authors. This set was gifted by my friend Richard Kikot. If you're not familiar with his channel, I will click it down below. He's amazing. Just anyways, inspiring human being in every way. Um, and I believe he said this was gifted to him. And I, I just wanted to speak on that for a minute. I find this perfume community to be amazing. Um, I, with the exception of a trip to Paris this year, I am focusing all my resources on house renovation. That's also why I'm in another room today, by the way. Um, and anyway, it's been amazing to me how many of you have you have reached out to me to share uh, sample sets, decants, that kind of thing. And I find this whole community to be this way. So anyway, I think this is, I am not the first person to test this beyond Richard, which I think is so amazing, just knowing multiple hands were on this. And um, anyway, thank you so much for passing it on, Richard, I love it. So um, many of you I know have talked about this house. I have not exper experienced them much. I tried them a few times, a few cents in um, a perfume shop close to me, which some of you might be familiar with called Indigo Perfumes because they do a lot of orders online as well. And she's just an amazing shopkeeper. Um, I tried a few of their scents there and really, really enjoyed them, but have not, have not really experienced them much outside of that. So this is a sample set. <clears throat> you can purchase these for a mere uh, $38 online and you get to choose the eight scents that you're excited about. So um, I read just a little bit about them. I think they're a US house and it seems like their theme is um, art or perfume, perfume as art through provocation. So through provoking and as art does and um, kind of in the style that a really good book might do. So um, I love that the sample set looks like a book, so cool. And then you open it up and there are your beautiful samples or decants, so cool. So. Um, I tested two on my wrist today, but otherwise have not tried the other. So I'm going to just briefly go through these. They of course have not, I've not spent a lot of time with them, which I look forward to doing. And I, uh, will report back after I do that because it's of course really important to also talk about like, what are things like after they spend time on your skin and through your life. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the eight here today. I'm going to dive right in. All right. So the two that I tested, I loved both. And I don't know if I just like, if I lucked out or what. Um, so the two I tried first um, are A City on Fire. And I was excited to try that because I've, I've heard a few people, including Richard, talk about it. And then Memoirs, I don't know if you can see, Memoirs of a Trespasser. Um, I purposely did not read about the notes uh, of these for the most part. Yeah, I've heard I think a couple people talk about them, but I didn't really retain much. Um, so I'm just going to spray them and talk to you about what I smell and yeah, what my experience is. So um, I have a city on fire on this left wrist and I'm going to respray it. God, so cool. Okay, so... Um, I think it's hard to do a smoky scent well, and that's what this is. Um, my favorite niche house, uh, Solstice Scents, I think does smoke really well. However, I think even that house, and I think Angela St. John the Nose is brilliant. Um, some of the smoke I really, really love, and I find more wearable, and some of them I smell more as like, <laughs> should I say, um, 
kind of like a library of scents. It's, they're not as wearable, but they're super interesting. And a few of them are actually even, they kind of choke me a little bit. They're so realistic. Um, this I find to be super wearable. However, it is it is intensely smoky. And um, I, I do not find this to be like a profound composition. Like there's not a ton of things in here as far as I can tell. Um, I basically get incense, wood, and smoke. Um, the thing that I do remember people saying about this, about A City on Fire, is that some people kind of like get roasted or cooked or barbecued meat. Mm. Um, I get a, maybe a hint of what might be like that the second I spray it, but the minute it dries down, that, that goes away. And I find this to be a very wearable smoke, um, which I think is really hard to do. So hooray for them. I think that's really cool. I would use this more as a layering scent, and I think it's amazing for what it is. Again, I think that it's hard to do smoke well. I think it's really amazing. I look forward to testing this with... Um, some kind of juxtaposing it against some other things. So I thought like, you know, like a marshmallow scent, <laughs> you know, I think it could be really cool with. Um, I think it could be really interesting with um, some florals, like um, I was thinking I would try it with like Guerlain's Insolence, um, or Insolence, I should say. Um, you know, things like that. I think it could be really interesting as a layering scent. So I look forward to trying that more. So that was really fun and yeah, really, really cool. Um, I, this second one that I tried, Memoirs of a Trespasser, I'm spraying that again and with pleasure because <clears throat> this is an instant love for me, instant love. Um, what I get is vanilla, um, oak, and booze, and, uh, <sighs> When this dries down, it almost becomes like, you know, that really good aged maple syrup that has a bit of a smoky scent or a bit of a boozy scent. That is what this smells like to me. This is a winner. This is something like, this could be to me a signature fall scent. That is how good it is to me, or at least how much it agrees with me. I mean, the whole thing about perfume is we all like different things, right? But for me, this is gorgeous, and um, I would chase anybody around who wore this. Be warned. So it's really, really beautiful. And truly, while I think there's a lot of vanillic, woody scents in the world, this is gorgeous. And it reminds me of one of my favorite scents that's been discontinued that I will never own again because it's just stupidly expensive now. Um, Kiehl's Vanilla Cedarwood. This might even be a little more interesting though, because it's got that like sugary, to me, almost like a maple-like scent. It's so beautiful. So that is a winner and something I hope to buy, uh, Memoirs of a Trespasser. I forgot to look at the price of their bottles, um, but if I remember correctly, they're around a $100 point, which I do not think is bad for an indie perfume, and especially if you love, love, love it. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna spray these others. I'm not gonna spray these on my skin since I already am wearing two. Um, the next I'm choosing in no particular order is Every Storm, A Serenade. So I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be aquatic or watery. We'll see. Oh God. I'm getting a DNA through this house. Like, I don't know what it is, but there's something that is different as they are, these are from one another that ties them together. This is really interesting. So the reason I'm pleasantly surprised is aquatics are really, really tough for me. I find a lot of modern aquatics to be super screechy, whatever, especially American perfumers have perceived as what smells like water or clean in the last 20 years. It's one of the, I love perfume. You probably know if you've watched the channel, I'm obsessed with not many things I don't like, but aquatics are tough for me. This is really cool. It reminds me a little of like what I would call a typically male, like a typical male marketed scent in that it's got this like intensely 
what is that? Is that Cologne? Uh, uh, not, not like Eau de Cologne, but Cologne, the, um, the um, chemical concoction. Um, it, it does smell to me a little more masculine leaning than the other two. Um, this also though has like a dry, again, I have no idea what's in this, a dryness that makes me think of like vetiver, can't be sure, but it definitely smells like rain. It smells actually more like rain. It smells like a thunderstorm to me. I have no idea how right or wrong I am about that. So I'll find out later. <laughs> Um, so I wonder if, you know, I would love to hear from any of you about any of these scents. Have you tried them? What do you think? So that is a really, like, I don't know if it's something I need to own because I struggle with aquatics, but this is one that like, I will definitely use the rest of this on a rainy or a thunderstormy day. And, um, this feels very, it's a mood as the kids say, it's a mood. All right. So, um, next is Telegramma. God, I have no idea what that would smell like. What does a telegram smell like? Perhaps paper, that's a guess. Have no idea, let's go. <clears throat> I always, it's funny. I always use the blotters in the opposite manner that you're supposed to, but <sighs> anyway, I like, the, I like to be able to benefit from the larger end when I'm sniffing it. Okay, telegramma, that's gorgeous. Gosh, that's weird. These are in the bet. Weird is a word to me that I love and commend and want to aspire to be. So this is weird in that I've never smelled anything like it. My guess is it has lavender in it. I have no idea. What is it? What do I get? This smells like Clean skin, powdered skin. My guess is that there's some lavender and musk in it. I have no idea though. This smells to me like slightly powdery. Um, mm, so nice, so nice. I love it. It's like comforting, really comforting. I really, really, really like this one. I'm setting this one aside with Memoirs, memoirs of a Trespasser, which I need to own, <clears throat> apparently. Okay, that is a winner for me. Really interesting. I mean, if for no other reason, I mean, it smells a little bit like a men's fougere, but um, I haven't smelled anything exactly like it. So that's super, super exciting. And yeah, any, anyways, I, I expect that more from indie houses and that is really cool. Okay, the next one is called Falling into the sea. So again, I'm expecting an aquatic and one that is more marine. We'll see. Uh oh, can she spray it? Whoa. Whoa. That smells blue for sure. Okay, I'm so excited because neither of these like names that hint at aquatic scents, neither of them are screechy. This one smells like a clean scent that is like totally doable for me. Gosh, that's so pretty. I wanna spray it again. Um, this feels actually like it has some florals, like, like it's decidedly floral or green. No, more floral. This also smells clean, but sweeter. It's sweet, not like sugar, sweet like what nature makes sweet. Gosh, that's so pretty. Gosh, what floral am I getting? It's almost lemony. I wonder if there's a little citrus in this too. Falling into the sea. So I get like clean, powdery, floral, um, sweet, and a little lemony, really, really nice. I, I actually would love to own that too. <laughs> Darn, okay. I am so surprised because normally anything that is hints at clean, aquatic, fresh, 
yeah, I, I struggle with, unless it's a super green scent. I love those. Cape Heartache is next. Mm-hmm, all right. This is so fun. Um, well, okay, so right out of the gate, I'm gonna be super honest. Were these others, I felt like those could blend with my life or my skin or my experience or I could wrap my head around them. This is super cool. Like this is to me like looking at contemporary art, but it's not art I necessarily like. Or maybe I should rephrase that. It's not art I'm instantly comfortable with and therefore instantly like. It's super interesting. I don't love it in the same way or I'm not, I don't, it doesn't feel like a hug. What is this? What is it? Spraying it again. This also feels really, really dry. Textured. This feels like paper to me, actually, where I was expecting um, Telegram to smell like paper or Telegramma. <clears throat> Ooh, what is in this? This actually smells like it could be vetiver too. Super dry, it almost feels like hay to me, if that makes sense. Um, really, really, really interesting. This definitely feels like, and I'm all about you wear whatever you like, no matter where you're at in the gender spectrum and no matter how it's marketed, but this feels like a male marketed scent to me, which it, I think could be cool actually to wear. Um, no matter what. Um, it feels a little linear for me. Um, it kind of feels like this is an interesting part of a composition, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't speak to me in the same way that the others do, but it's really cool. So there. Um, next, Sun Drunk, Sun Drunk. Um, okay, I'm intrigued by something <clears throat> called that. Oh, wow. That is also bizarre in, in an excellent way. This feels like, is it blood orange or orange? Grapefruit, I'm not sure does have a bit of a it's bit it's a little bitter it's citrus it, it is like it's the word it feels almost um soapy when it dries down which makes me think it has uh orange blossom or orange flower pedigree this is a really kind of like it's slightly bitter citrus that doesn't smell like every other citrus and there's a gazillion other citrus scents it's very interesting. I feel like my my BFF Sarah would love this because she likes things all things orange, and it would be not the typical. It gets soapy fast, almost waxy, like beeswaxy. Really interesting. Um, not one I have to have, but super super cool. Like really really different. Um, okay, last. Oh, I think I've I think I've heard people talk about this Saint Julep. It makes me think it's gonna smell like a cocktail. Um, and the pretty even color of the label makes me think that, but who knows? Um, is it Saint Germain? Is it, is it um, a mint julep? Where is the nozzle? Okay, here we go. Uh-oh, is the sprayer broken? Oh, no, there it goes. Oh! I love that. Mmm. Okay, all of these definitely have some DNA. There's like a slight smoke, not smokiness, a slight dryness, almost like hay. I feel like to almost all of these, which I think is really cool actually when there's a DNA running through a house. Um, this does smell like it's got a little mint or herbalness. But it's not, to my nose, lavender, which often when things are kind of light and 
herby like that. Uh, that's what it is. Um, this smells, I thought it was just going to smell like bright limey, like a cocktail. It, it, it smells, <sighs> it smells like garden air, like your herb garden and your powder puff had a baby. That's what I get. It's really nice. Gosh, I think this could be great on anyone this time of year, especially really, really beautiful. Gosh, what a cool house. Oh my gosh. I know there are some fan favorites in this house too. They're gourmands. Like I think there's one that's supposed to smell like an ice cream or a waffle cone. Um, gosh, out of these eight, I mean, I think there are three that I would really, really love to own, which is kind of amazing. And all of these are so cool. They're so... I get why they're named what they're named. They feel so experiential and definitely evoke a mood. <laughs> um, yeah, just really amazing. I'd love to hear from you all. Have you worn these? Do you have any favorites? Um, and I look forward to spending more time with these because I actually think there are some in here that might not be instant loves that would grow on me. But the ones that I absolutely know that I want to experience more are um, Memoirs of a Trespasser. Falling into the sea. And gosh, what was the other one? I don't know. I like St. Julep a lot. I, actually, there's four or five in these I, I really, really, really love. I think a city on fire would be more of a layering scent, though, not a standalone. But these are so, so cool. So impressive. How interesting to be an indie perfumer and to create something like this. Cleveland, Ohio, y'all. Okay, um, again, cannot say enough about this experience. Super cool, highly recommend. For a mere $38, you get to test eight of your choice. So another thing I might do is order another eight just to see what they're like. Um, and again, thanks to Richard and the perfume community for its sense of community and sharing. So please let me know what you think of these scents and can't wait to talk soon. Cheers, bye.